Hey folks, David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com, here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, March 31, 2015, close of the month, close of the quarter. Tonight inside the numbers, we're going to talk about the uh, SPY and the E-mini. We had a bad close today and we'll go through the uh, ramifications of that and what to look for going forward. We'll talk about gold, crude oil, interest rates in the bond market, and I think we'll uh, discuss the dollar if I can remember at the end of the video. Okay, so um, let's go over to the uh, Spider Daily chart. Actually, let's not. Let's go over to the 10-minute chart because I want to show you what happened today for most of the day. So last night, um, if you remember from the video, and if you don't, you can go back and listen to it or watch it. Um, I said that the the support area for today was going to be 207, and if you remember on the E-mini, it was 2065, 2066. So today, let's put the line and where 207 is, okay, 207. All right, 207, 207 and a quarter, I probably said I usually give myself a 25 cent leeway. And what happened was the market gapped down, okay, came into 207 once, twice, three times, hit it, uh, pierced it, 206.97, then floated up, came down, tried it again, 207, floated up, came down, tried it again, the third hit broke through, but that was pretty formidable resistance all day, or support, I should say, all day long. Now, the reason why I'm a little concerned with today's close is because, um, you know, I really wanted to see a close above that 2065-66 area in order to remain uh, at least in the short term uh, bullish. And based on this close, I'm really... I'm not bearish, but I'm not so bullish. I have less conviction than I did before that we were going to see higher prices into the end of this week. So now tomorrow is going to be very important what happens early on. If we start down tomorrow, I'm afraid there's a lot lower prices coming, and we're probably going to go down and test the 2033 in the S&P E-mini or uh, the coinciding SPY number is 204. OK, and and uh, I just um, I'm not sure at this stage, I don't have conviction like 80 percent probability that one thing or the other is going to happen. And all as a result of the last like hour of trading today. So if we stayed above that 2065, 66 area, I would say that we were going to go and take a run at 2100 in the S&P e mini um, this week. And now um, I, I don't know that that's such a probability, but we'll have to see how tomorrow unfolds. There's really nothing else we can do at this point. So if we come lower, um, you know, you're going to have to begin to target the 204 double bottom again. And if we open up tomorrow, and here's the good news, if we open up tomorrow at, just by happenstance above 2065, for example, then, uh, then it's game back on for higher prices this week. So that's kind of where we stand. Now we went into no man's land as a result of the last hour of trading today. Um, all right, let's go over to uh, the gold market. And gold basically didn't do much today. Uh, it was down uh, a tick or two or a dollar or two, but um, not anything out of the ordinary, not anything we don't expect. This is really a time issue right now. We just want gold to work off slowly, maybe another day or two, we want it to come in nice and slow into this 20-period moving average, and then we want it to take off to the upside. That's what we're looking for, okay? Uh, today was not out of the ordinary. Today was basically none other than a pause day after a pretty big down day, and I wouldn't read anything into it other than it was just a pause day. So there's nothing else to really discuss. And likewise, GDX was down a few pennies today, 26 cents. The market was down. And gold was down a buck or so. Uh, that's a recipe for there's no way there's going to be higher prices in GDX. So therefore, we're in the same camp. And, you know, by the way, um, those that want to buy GDX that own, don't own GDX, you want it to go lower. You want it to come into this area here. Okay, you want to buy it around 18, 17, 90. That's ideal. Why? Because look how close your first... Uh, your most prudent stop out is, which is 1771. So that's one way to play GDX. And then, of course, your ultimate um, 
real stop out for the trader that wants to give it a little rope is um, 1729 on a daily close. Okay, let's go over to, I don't have anything else in GDX or gold. We're just waiting. Uh, go over to the um, oil market and uh, oil, you know, I said that as long as we stay above 47, we're okay. And that still remains the case. But if you look today, um, let's look at an intraday, the 10 minute chart. You can see how erratic oil was. Okay, this was um, 1040 in the morning. So, you know, we open head up. Down, up, down, up, down, up. I mean, this is no pattern here. This is just erratic behavior, and there's no way to trade this. Um, you have to wait for something to form for the chart to give you a definitive direction, which way it wants to move. But as long as you stay above 47, and it's more clear on the hourly chart here, uh, as long as you stay above 47 down here, okay, this is your line in the sand, okay? All this support in here, as long as you stay above 47, you're okay. Below 47 on a daily close, not good. So that's your line in the sand. Today was a quarterly close and a monthly close, so it's not out of the ordinary for them to take oil in one direction or the other to an extreme. And that does explain some of the erratic behavior that we saw today, up and down, up and down, up and down. So the month close, uh, quarter close, I'm going to give it a little bit of a leeway in order to let to see to see how tomorrow and Thursday unfolds in crude. Um, the bond market. Let's go over to TLT. Uh, TLT was down slightly today. Um, actually, it wasn't. It was up slightly. It's down in the aftermarket. Uh, the um, let me get the daily close today. Just bear with me uh, one second. Uh, 3069 was the daily close 13069 and we are 13014 so this is an after hours print uh okay 313070 i have the uh well that's a 60 minute either way um so uh yields were down today tlt was up slightly but again same as last night we're in no man's land there's no trade here there's no definitive like oil there's no definitive pattern to tell us one thing or the other is taking place here's where the low was here's where the high was you're right in the middle okay you're hovering in between the 50 and the 618 retrace uh of well no this is um 38.2 to 50 cent retrace um from here to here and that's where we are and if you want to see that you know, i could draw it in real quick uh let me look for the fib lines and we go from here down to here here's your 382 here's your 50 percent retrace and that's the reason we're hovering here um however you know you've got to wait for the market to tell you that it's uh going to move in one direction or the other and right now we don't have anything definitive so it's a no trade so i remembered let's go talk about the dollar the dollar had a nice uh, nice up move today and and I, I remember last night in the video i told you that we were going to see higher prices in the dollar um and guess what we saw higher prices in the dollar, and this is a bullish uh, pattern developing here. As long as you stay above um, on a closing basis, on an hourly closing basis, as long as you stay above 98.55, um, there's higher prices coming in the dollar. And we didn't get our number, we didn't get the number down into the zone. We, we kind of almost touched the zone, and we didn't last week. And then we took off again. So I'm still looking for lower prices to develop in the dollar. I'm looking to buy it in this zone. If we just go from here, I'm going to have to reassess and figure out where I'm able to hop on this trade. Because there are higher prices coming in the dollar later this year up into the 105, 108 area. And uh, But I think we have some time to get in. And I just do want to see a little bit lower of a number in order to get in the trade. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there tonight. Hopefully it's been helpful. I'm David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.